study, a program designed to help you answer your questions. You can call, email, or text your questions to us, and our panel of pastors will give you answers from the Word of God. What is God's will? What happens when you die? Does God really care about me? If you have questions like these, then pull up a chair and join us in the pastor's study. Welcome and God bless you. Thank you for joining us this evening at Global Television Network in the pastor's study. Uh, I have a very uh, uh, personal and uh, powerful uh, discussion this evening on uh, why suicide is not the answer. And, you know, it, it's the year 2021 uh, right now, and, and the, the trials and the troubles of, of 2020, just because we change a new year doesn't mean that those troubles go away and dissipate and just evaporate. And, uh, and then so you got the post-holiday uh, blues for some people, and then you just got the struggles, uh, as we've been talking here prior to, uh, turning on here, that uh, just young people uh, trying to find meaning, find boundaries in their life and uh, maybe also struggling with some depressive thoughts or, or uh, with uh, thoughts of suicide. And so we'd certainly want to uh, begin this uh, new year addressing some of these very important questions. And, and before we get started on some specific things, uh, I want to encourage you, if you've uh, been struggling with depression or know somebody who has, or if you uh, have some questions about uh, suicide and uh, the issues that, that surround that, feel free to give us a call. Uh, you can, you can uh, email your uh, question, you can call us in uh, at uh, 719-820-9280, that's 719 uh, or you can uh, text your uh, question to us at 336-575-6577. Any of those ways to reach us, to get a hold of us, and to ask those questions, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, before we ask these questions, though, some of the ones that we already have uh, in store for you, we're going to have uh, each pastor introduce himself. So, Pastor Pash. I'm Bishop Aaron Powers, Senior Pastor of the Breakthrough Community Church of God, located in lovely Mebbin, North Carolina, at uh, 703 South 3rd Street, Mebbin, North Carolina, 27302. My wife Stephanie and I serve together there, and we have three little boys, um, and we'd love to invite you to come out sometime and be with us if you're ever in the area. My name is Dr. Robert Shaw, and while serving as a pastor, I currently serve as a licensed clinical mental health counselor supervisor. So I conduct uh, private counseling, uh, Christian counseling primarily, and I'm also an assistant professor at Liberty University. Hi, and I'm Andrew Crawley. I'm a senior leader of Alliance Church here in Greensboro, North Carolina. Good to be with you guys. I'm also the author of the very critical book, The New Age Vernacular, exposing the worldly language that Christians use. If you are breathing, today and you are a Christian. You need that book because we expose some language that the church and even the world call Christian language until you hold it up in light of scripture. So glad to be here amongst the brethren and excited about tonight. All right. And I read that book. It's a good one. Uh, get that uh, in your bookshelf and actually read it. Uh, Amen. It's a good one. I'm Jeff Bartolette from uh, New Heart Community Friends right here in Greensboro, North Carolina, just a small church of people who love Jesus and want to share them with the rest of the world. Uh, so if you want to come on out to 1201 Merritt Drive in Greensboro, we'd welcome you and I'd love to have you. Uh, as I, I said at the beginning here, um, suicide is a topic I think sometimes we may want to avoid because uh, of how maybe the church has handled it in the past. Uh, and, uh, and so we want to ask some just some uh, honest and direct questions and, and try and help people broach this subject and be able to begin uh, with uh, how, to, how to manage it and how to understand it. So one of the questions that, that uh, we've had asked before and, uh, and is a really good one, but if I'm a, a depressed or if I'm struggling with depression or thoughts of suicide, am I saved? Am I a Christian at all? Uh, guys, what do you think about that? First of all, every person, every redeemed person, every person who's saved has something that they struggle with. Uh, Paul talked about a thorn in the flesh. Now, just because uh, you're saved, that does not make you exempt from natural, normal emotions. Um, Depression uh, could be an exacerbated form of, uh, of sadness to the extreme where we continue to, to, to get deeper and deeper into a situation mentally that we, that we don't understand or uh, that causes us extreme distress. But any person, and, and pastors, there are pastors that struggle with depression. Be, so because you struggle with something, it does not mean you're not saved. Now, if you haven't asked Jesus Christ in your heart as your Lord and Savior, that was 
what determines whether or not you're saved. If you want to ask if the prophets of old had problems with, with depression, well, they absolutely did. Uh, they went and hid in caves. Uh, you know, one asked, uh, am I the only one, God? Am I the only one left? And God said, no, I got several thousand that haven't bowed their knee to Baal. So there, and these are some of the most anointed men of God that ever walked the face of the earth. So there is uh, a depression that comes to us naturally that, that makes us feel down. But then there's clinical depression, which is a little different. I'll let our, one of our other esteemed brothers address that. Yeah, depression is, is um, something that is a, a normal struggle. And I, I want to use the word normal so that when you understand that we are all broken and how brokenness shows up in our life varies from person to person and situation to situation. When we look at the Bible, we look at people in the Bible and we sometimes elevate them to mystic levels. Mm -hmm. But they, are just, was, they were just as human as we were. Mm -hmm. Moses was an individual who struggled with anger. Elijah struggled with depression. Yeah. Uh, Peter was struggled with impulse and compulsivity. Yes, sir. Thomas was a doubter. And, and yet God still raised up and used them in many different ways. And really, things, two things mainly lead to depression. One is the inability to recover from disappointment. Mm. Mm. When we when we hold on to disappointment and we, we, we shield ourselves from others who can come alongside That's of good. us, That's good. if we hold on to disappointment too long, it could lead to depression. The second major uh, avenue is unresolved grief. Now, grief is normal because grief is a response to loss, loss of any kind. And if you live long enough, it's not so much if you're going to struggle loss, it's when. So, if you don't, if, if you don't overcome d uh, disappointment, it could lead to depression. If you don't deal with grief, elongated grief can lead to depression. And we as a culture in the United States, we don't grieve very well. Mm -hmm. That's why the largest number of mental health patients deal with depression because oftentimes we don't give them permission to grieve in a proper way. We don't come alongside of people who are grieving. We deem grief as weakness. Mm -hmm. Well, if Jesus wept, hmm. if we can grieve the Holy Spirit, which is said in Isaiah and Ephesians, mm -hmm. then why do we feel we are exempt from that? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen to what my brothers are saying so far. And I definitely agree with uh, what they said, and just like I said, the short answer to the question is, can you be saved? The, the, the short answer, of course, is yes. But I also want to, I don't want to leave you there because you and no one else who are carriers of the Holy Spirit have to be. You know, Romans chapter 8, again, lets us know that those who are, there's a, the only thing that makes a difference between whether you're saved or not currently is if you are a possessor of the Holy Spirit, according to Romans chapter 8. So with that, God equips us with the power that whatever our broken areas are, we don't have to stay that way. And he has made available things, which should give us the hope of the good news. That's part of the good news. Not only that we're saved in the end, but that God can breathe life into us now. And I really want to say quickly, too, that I'm glad that we're having this topic because I would truly say that at large, on average, the church neglected mental health and mental health topics. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but physical health as well. Yeah. And these are the things that takes us out more than anything because what we like to do is we, we try to put everything up under the spirit and say, well, the spirit is going to take care of it. But why is it that it's in the Bible that we are mind, soul, and body and spirit? Yeah. And so what the church needs to do, we need to have a healthy balance of mental health that is set apart from you know what I'm saying? Everything else that we preach our good old scriptures as well as as well as physical health. And so I'm glad because we've neglected this and we don't talk about the mental health field enough. And we try to just sweep it under the rug, say, take two of these and call me on the morning. We'll pray about it. But yeah. mental health is deeper than that. Yeah, definitely. So and, and, and I think uh, you hit the nail on the head there. I think we kind of uh, presume that in the body of Christ. Uh, we have to be perfect. We have to be coming in with our problems resolved mm -hmm. on our own. And Amen. that's just that's just not reality. Mm -hmm. As you guys mentioned, I mean, I think of Elijah saying, you know, be, uh, I, I, I'd be better off dead, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, Job, you know, saying it'd be better if I wasn't born. Mm -hmm. You know, all, all these these people that we lift up, as you guys had mentioned, as, as pillars of the faith. And yet 
uh, they still battled uh, those, those moments of, uh, you know, Paul pleading that thorn in his flesh to be removed, and yet he had to learn mm -hmm. uh, to depend upon God's grace. And so, you know, if, if you're that type of person out there that, that may be struggling with, with some of the either personal or national or, or, or local crises that are going on in, in your life, and, and you have some grief and some struggles there, it's normal. It's okay. Uh, what we don't want to do, as, as uh, Dr. Uh, Shell I've mentioned, is, is stay there. We don't want to linger there. Absolutely. Uh, you know, over the course of the last several months, and, and really over the last year, you could say, mm. uh, most of us could probably say we've had to deal with disappointment. We've, we've had to deal with uh, a disappointment in some way or another. Absolutely. And so uh, we want to recognize that that's not an uncommon emotion. I think that's extremely important that you said that and going along with, and, and building on what these gentlemen have said. Um, depression is a serious, debilitating mood disorder that can alter the way that you think, uh, the way you function in your daily life, seeing problems at home as worse than what they are. Um, school, worse than what they are in your social life. Teenagers uh, have right now, according to the CDC, the highest growing rate of suicide. Teenagers and younger, highest growing rate of suicide in the United States. According to the CDC, suicide was the 10th leading cause of death. Last year, 2020, 48,344 Americans died. That's 132 people per day died of suicide because they did not see hope or way out. And of 90% of those, were diagnosably treatable. Correct. Okay. All right. We're going to come back to how, how we need to be able to resolve this, and that's why we're raising these questions. But we do have someone on the line, and so thank you, uh, caller, for calling in. Why don't you introduce yourself, where you're from, and, and please ask your question. Hi, this is Andre from Greensboro, and um, I was calling in relation to suicide. Um, I believe firmly that suicide is a sin, as uh, many others do. But you do have other believers that don't believe the same. And I was talking with a believer once that stated that it's not a sin to commit suicide. I was in uh, disagreement because of the fact that you're throwing away the gift of God and you don't have an opportunity to repent. And then we got into discussion about even the film, This A Wonderful Life, because it's basically in that film was saying that in, in the character wanting to commit suicide, he was throwing away God's greatest gift. But my uh, main question is, how do you talk with and, and, I guess, communicate with other believers that believe differently than you that suicide is not a sin? Uh, thanks for bringing that up, uh, Andre. Uh, go ahead. If we want to use the word sin, let's, let's do a word study for a second. The word sin in Greek simply means to miss the mark. So anything that misses the mark from God's design is sin. Yeah. So whether it is suicide, whether it is addictions, whether it is anything that misses the mark, yes, it is sin. But as I read the scriptures, there is only one that is classified as an unforgivable one. Mm -hmm. And it's not suicide. Yeah. It's called the blaspheming of the Holy Spirit. Now that too we can spend a whole t uh, mm -hmm. bunch of time on that as well. Yeah. But that has been misrepresented as well. Because the Greek in that understanding simply states that the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit simply is a contempt with rejection and hatred for. Mm. Blaspheming means to reject with contempt and hatred. Now, if someone rejects, and if the Holy Spirit's job on earth is to reveal Christ, which it is, and as he does that, and we reject with hatred and contempt, that becomes unforgivable. But that's the only one that's ever described. Such yeah. and, and, you know, the, if we want to lump uh, some of those sins in there, we can think of the, the things that we ought to have done but didn't do. You know, those, mm -hmm. uh, which sin is omission. escaping me now. What'd you get? Sin of omission. Sin of omission. <laughs> yeah, the, the sins of omission, the things that we don't do that we really ought to do and that, that the Spirit prompts us to do. So, so we do have to be careful about, and I'm glad you, you clarified that, uh, that uh, you know, we, we don't want to uh, express that, that someone has, uh, who may be struggling with uh, suicidal thoughts, that they're, you know, in an unforgivable state. Yeah, and I think, it's, I think it's good to understand that. Let's start, because normally, um, if, when we, we're always privy and we're always tempted to dive into humanism if we're not careful. Yes, yeah. sir. And, this, and so what I mean by that is if we don't start with humans, let's start with God. And the thing about God is that 
when we think about suicide, and, and to just to uh, amen the caller, yes, you are right, because I know a lot of times we're in a, an American opinionated state where everybody's opinion is valid, and that's not true according to the gospel. So yeah, it is sin, um, and that's something that we won't, don't want to encourage anyone to do, uh, because the one that, that has done it and that has gone on need to, it will be important to them to understand that it is forgivable based on whatever they're experiencing right now, which none of us know, right. because we are not judges. But what we need to tell the living is that whether it's forgivable or not, that's something that you never want to do mm -hmm. for one reason, because your life is not yours to take. Mm -hmm. So when we start with God, we understand scripturally, those of us who are saved that we were brought with the price. Yes, sir. So just like we don't want to mark our bodies, just like you wouldn't mark your rental property and your walls up because it's not yours, you soon have to give it back. So you need to get, if you're renting something or something on loan, you give it back to the best possible way it was given to you. And so because it's not our lives to take, no one wants to be encouraged to, to, to adhore that as an escape mechanism to be like, because yes. some people even treat divorce or other things that way. Well, if I can do it and be forgiven of it, just let me do it and escape this, not understanding that here's the thing that we understand about God. We can't blanket anything because he being the ultimate perfect righteous judge would judge all of us differently based on our hearts. We can do the same action and be looked at differently from God hmm. because he is the only one that can see the heart right. Hmm. Judges the thoughts and intentions of the heart from yes. Hebrews. Amen. We do have another call on the line, and we can come back to this in just a second. Go ahead, caller, introduce yourself, and uh, let us know where you're from and uh, your question, please. Um, yes, my name is Barbara Burnich, and I'm calling from Greensboro. Um, how do you address the belief that if you're depressed, all you have to do is read God's word more, pray more, praise more, give thanks more, rejoice more, and you will have peace that surpasses all understanding. Thank you. I, I had a little bit. Uh, I got go, go ahead, Pastor Powers. Basically, she was asking, how do you get out of depression? Okay, gotcha. As a Christian, gotcha. you yep. pray yep. more, read more. So. All right. And let me go ahead since yeah. I understood yeah, the question. Yeah, since you're talking, go for <laughs> it. <laughs> The answer is yes, 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 <laughs> yes, but don't try to do it alone. One of the worst things you can do when you're depressed is isolate yourself. And that's one of the Amen. reasons why the suicide rate was so high in 2020 is because Isolation. we're all quarantined and socially isolated. All that does is play tricks on your mind. Uh, the, the Bible tells us, do not, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is. So much the more as you see the day approaching. And what's that day? The hard, the hard times are here. Um, the ter great and terrible day of the Lord is coming. So we need to be more and more together as believers. Uh, as a pre-trib uh, uh, pre rapturist, I believe that Jesus is coming to take us out for the, the worst of it hits. But I will tell you that we are in the signs of, of the beginning of sorrows at the least. Uh, the signs of the times are all around us. We need each other more and more and more. Get with the fellowship of believers that can encourage you. There is joy in serving Jesus. And if the, the people around you are not joyful, if they come in, you can come to my church and be just like me. Well, <laughs> find another church. <laughs> yeah. Find some more joyful people to be around. Now, remember, misery loves company. And uh, so don't go into a place where they're singing, there's a tear in my beer because I'm crying for you, dear. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Dr. Bob. Yeah. Uh, it is a difficult thing to do, as, as uh, the pastor said, because you don't want to isolate yourself. Yes. Yeah, uh, the Holy not. Spirit, the paracletus, mm -hmm. is God coming alongside of us. And while he does that in his spirit, he also dispatches the church to do that for one another. Yes, sir. We Hallelujah. cannot do this alone. Yes, sir. Uh, so to do the disciplines of praying more, reading the scriptures more, yes, those will have all kinds of benefits. But like Job said in his, in his uh, uh, depression, he said, my eyes are dimmed by my grief. Mm. Mm -hmm. When you're grieving, you don't see clearly. It's true. You don't hear clearly. Amen. You don't speak clearly. And that's why it is so much more that's good. Uh, uh, powerfully to have someone come alongside to give you perspective. Because when you are depressed, if you do try to read the scriptures, it may not have the impact that it could have as you go through the depression and maybe come out on the other side. You do need someone to help give mm. you proper perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, there's things that you could do. Always think outside yourself because yes. when we're depressed, we think 
only of ourselves. We just internalize. That's good. Amen. When we think of others, there's always others that could use our help, what we have Great. to offer. We yeah. always have something to offer, but when we're depressed, we don't always believe that. Yeah. I'm glad you said that, uh, Dr. Shaw. Uh, and I want to be uh, you know, as, as transparent here as is possible. There was a, uh, a pretty difficult, challenging uh, period of my life about 10 years ago when, when I was struggling with, you know, maybe it would just be better if, if I wasn't here. But that was something that, that the Holy Spirit must have constantly brought back to me uh, was to say, well, what about your, what about your family? What about your, your brother, your sister, your mother, your father? All those people that would have said, you know, why couldn't I reach them? Or, you know, you, you could have just talked to me. And, and, and it was the Holy Spirit coming back and saying, you know what, that's not the answer. Hmm. You may be struggling right now because you, you don't see a, a way out. And, and God obviously brought me through that in a way that I couldn't see. And, and I think, as you'd said, dimming the eyes, it's hard for someone who's depressed to, to see any hope. And, and what we have to do is, and I, and I think that's why we want to be very careful how we handle it when we, when we call suicide a, a sin. Yes, it is a sin. No, it's not unforgivable. Yes, we can struggle with it. But, but no, there is hope. You, you don't have to surrender to that. Hallelujah. And, uh, and, and there is a, a better day coming. And, and I think when we I, I think you had said, does it only hurt me? Does yeah. suicide only hurt me? Absolutely not. Absolutely right? 54% of all Americans, 54% of all Americans have been affected by a suicide in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Wow. It, wow. It, as a matter of fact, uh, suicide affects six to 10 people yeah. of the, from the person who's yeah. lost their life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, wow. so just, to, just to you out there, if you are struggling with this right now, and, and maybe you are, your eyes are dim and you can't see that, that hope just yet, hear us, okay? Mm -hmm. And may the Holy Spirit Amen. place that upon you to recognize and understand there are people that love you. Jesus. If you don't reach out to them, or, 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 or even if the, you, you may feel isolated right now, the enemy's plan is to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to isolate you, make you feel like you're all alone, but you are not, okay? You are not alone. Call this number, and we'll pray with you right now. And, and I don't mean that flippantly. I mean that seriously. You are not alone. You need to hear that there are people that care. And uh, there are people that will be negatively impacted if you would go through with that. And so, you know, again, we, we want to uh, approach this very uh, uh, wisely and humbly, uh, but also uh, very firmly to say suicide is not the answer. Uh, it is not the answer. Pastor Powers. National Suicide Hotline Prevention Lifeline is 1-800-273-TALK. 1-800-273-TALKS, the National Suicide Hotline, or also uh, I Am Alive, 1-800-784-2433. Now, I realize there might be people in other countries watching this as well. If you're in the UK, it is, you can call Samaritans UK at 116-123. If you're in Australia, 131114, or visit suicide.org mm. to get mental help that way. But please call us for prayer as well. We'd love to pray for you. Yeah, or, or just reach out to a local church body uh, or, or someone that you know that is a solid brother or sister in Christ uh, that will be able to, to walk with you. Thank God we have the Holy Spirit. And yeah. uh, I'm so thankful for the Holy Spirit in my own life but that to walk alongside us, to help us in this journey. Amen. But, but uh, you know, sometimes we need someone with flesh on and reach out to that. I had a couple people that I could do that with. And, uh, you know, just kind of talk you off the ledge kind of thing, metaphorically speaking. Uh, and, uh, and so we certainly want to encourage you to, to do that, to reach out to those folks. Well, uh, there's another question that, that's been asked here, and it's, do all people who attempt suicide fully intend to die? Is, is, uh, is death uh, the intention when, when, when uh, suicide is, is attempted? And that's a, a really, I think, powerful question because some, for some people, it might not be the, uh, the intention. So, I, I mean, of course you wouldn't, it's not possible to be able to determine everyone's intention because mm -hmm. that's an individual basis as far as what their intentions are. But I did want to make mention of what we just left off earlier too uh, before we answer that is to just throw this little plug in there. <clears throat> the lateral Jesus is still Jesus. And what I mean by that is sometimes we think we only try to pursue Jesus by ourselves. And I'm just amen on what everyone else has already said. But the lateral Jesus is just as much Jesus as the vertical Jesus. Mm -hmm. The vertical Jesus is the one that when we're in our own prayer closet, when we're reading our Bible by ourselves, mm -hmm. we want that voice by ourselves, we're praying by ourselves. 
the lateral Jesus is every other human being that is carriers of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And it's yeah. Jesus as well. And we sometimes we neglect the lateral Jesus trying to reach the ver Jesus vertically. And so sometimes when you just like the Bible says, it says, listen, confess your faults one and pray that you may be healed. There's a level of healing that won't come by us and our direct connection to God. God says, I have healing for you, but you have to get it from the person that's beside you who is a Christian as well. And sometimes we as a church, because of the way we structured church, we neglect true koinonia and we neglect mm -hmm. true fellowship, true beyond the surface fellowship with believers. That sometimes, even if you don't tell it because we want to be isolated, true fellowship, sometimes those carriers of the Holy Spirit, it gives us opportunity to pick up on things that you won't tell us. Mm -hmm. That's where discernment comes yeah. in. Church, we have to do a better job of putting people in position to discern. And like the Bible says this, know those that labor among you. We don't because we're satisfied with the sermon. A presentation, a couple of songs, pay our tithes and offerings, go home, come home and do it all over again. Well, I'm here to tell you, folks, if church is not founded upon relationship with other human beings that are Christians, we are missing out on God's best. Yeah. And so I just wanted to throw that in yeah. there, too, because that's the backbone of a lot of times we think, well, God ain't working unless he works with my individual. No, God is still working, but you have to go to him through the ways in which you say get to him. And every way ain't just with our one-on-one -on -one connection. We have to value him and other brothers and sisters. Well, we're the body. Because we are the body. The body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. to, to answer that question, uh, statistics show that attempts of suicide, attempts and gestures, completely outnumber those who complete it. Mm -hmm. 10 to 1. Wow. So for every 10 that attempts suicide, only one successful. Hmm. It is an ill-calculated, in many cases, it's an ill-calculated attempt with, uh, it's an ill-calculated uh, play with death mm -hmm. because they're crying out for help. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And they may have cried out for help before and nobody listened. Mm -hmm. And that's what, like, like uh, the bishop mentioned, we have to come together and be a community to, to be aware, mental health teaching in churches, that is my passion serving as a pastor, but now serving primarily as a Christian counselor, I travel and I speak at churches to prepare and become and help us become aware of what to look for in our brothers and sisters so that we know how to come alongside of. That's good. Because the enemy likes to isolate, and as yeah. soon as he isolates us, he's got us. Yeah. And his intent is to steal, kill, and destroy. Yeah. But God's intent is to bring life. Amen. And he brings life through flesh and blood as well as his Holy Spirit. And it's important to know that you are not alone. And if you're crying out for help and suicide's coming through your mind, remember this, suicide is a permanent answer for a temporary problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Amen, brother. Um, Hallelujah. You, you, what you may not understand is, again, as, as when you look at pastors, some people think pastors have got it all together. Some people think that, that pastor never gets down, that pastor never has a problem, that, uh, I mean, they only work three days a week for a couple of hours, right? I mean, they, um, <laughs> they think that pastors, they live in the lap of luxury. Uh, they think that, uh, you know, they're exempt from every tax or every insurance issue, and, and that's just absolutely not true. Matter of fact, the fastest growing profession uh, among which uh, suicide rates are rising uh, our service industry, such as police, firefighters, EMTs, and pastors. 23% uh, of pastors reported having some kind of struggle with mental illness. 12% were diagnosed, and 3.2% of pastors in 2020 actually followed through and committed suicide. Mm -hmm. Pastors. The question that I have is, is suicide the act of a sane person? Mm. Yeah. And would God condemn a person to eternal hell who is not sane in the action that they committed? What if a person started it and couldn't stop it and changed their mind? A friend of mine, his son committed suicide by hanging himself. And when the forensic evidence came in, the young man's footprints were up on the wall where he was trying his best to get this noose off of him, but he couldn't reverse what he'd already done. It was an ill-calculated gamble. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. It, exactly. So we need to be we need to realize that that uh, just because that you're feeling it, you're not alone. Right. Pastors, teachers, everybody at some point experiences depression. But at the same time, it is escapable with help. Yeah. I want to introduce something here, too, that, that we, uh, we've uh, talked about the enemy wanting to steal, kill, and destroy. And, and, and I always, uh, my mind goes to that wild kingdom, you know, where, where you see the, the pack of hyenas or, or lions or whatever uh, trying to isolate that one wildebeest mm -hmm. or zebra or something. Mm -hmm. And if they can get it by itself, mm -hmm. then they got a meal. Mm -hmm. and, and, and really, that's what the enemy tries to do. But, but that concept is that, I'm, try, I'm trying to just say this here. Where does spiritual warfare come into play here? Come on. That we have to be aware of. That, that these thoughts, number one, just because we're thinking the thought, that's not necessarily a sin. Just because we're that's being right. tempted doesn't mean it's a sin. Amen. Because then I think what the enemy tries to do is then try and beat, beat us over the head with it. And well, since I've thought it, well, therefore, I must be hopeless. Amen. And, and we got to be careful that we don't go down that path. We're going to come back to that in just a second. But right now, we want to provide a, a little promotional uh, for Global Television Network, and we'll be right back, but stay with us. Hi, my name is Don Miller, and I'm the pastor of Westover Church in Greensboro, North Carolina. I don't think anybody needs to tell you of the power of television, but I'm here simply to remind you of the potential and the power of Christian television of lives that can be touched in our community and around the world. And I'm here to let you know that Global Television Network is here to be used by the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, I've been here, and I've seen the faith of the people that serve here. And I've looked into their hearts, and I know their vision to be used for the Lord. So I want to ask you in these days to pray and to watch and support believing that God is going to use Global Television Network in a powerful way. The Lord bless you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you for coming back and, and staying with us there. So we introduced this thought of, of you know, uh, where does spiritual warfare come into play? And, and obviously, this is not a battle we can win on our own. We need the help of the Holy Spirit, Jesus living in us. And we also need the help of the body of Christ to help us walk through these times and make sure that we don't go through with what uh, the enemy may be uh, tempting us to uh, attempt. Uh, so I think awareness is, is in, in important uh, first and foremost. foremost. And, and, uh, and so we want to talk about what, you know, what some of those symptoms are, what some of those signs are. Um, and uh, you know, just because you may have been feeling a little down or, or depressed or discouraged lately, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're suicidal. But uh, we do want to uh, at least be able to broach this subject for those people who are out there who may have been lingering there with that unresolved grief or, or some other inability to recover from disappointment. Uh, and so what, what are some of the signs, Dr. Shaw? Yeah, and just to piggyback on that is just because a person suffering with depression does not mean they're a candidate for suicide. Sure. Depression doesn't necessarily lead to that, but it's on the path. Uh, some of the symptoms are... The, the, the sleeping issues. Maybe a person's sleeping too long or too much into the day, or they can't get to sleep, mm. and they get up quite often in the middle of the night. Other symptoms are eating issues. Sometimes people will eat too much. One of the things that, you know, we are fearfully, wonderfully made, and what I mean by that is we are, we are comprised, every human being is comprised of four components. We are spiritual beings, emotional beings, physical beings, and intellectual beings. And if one of those aspects is off kilter, it affects the other three. That's so cool. when you have a good meal, our bodies, our brain releases feel-good chemicals, endorphins, and you have a sense of well-being. And addictions is another symptom of, of uh, depression. People may uh, pursue addictions of some kind because, after all, addictions make us feel good. And during that time... People may increase their eating, or instead they may, they may decide not to eat at all because after all, they've gotten to the point where life is not meaningful anymore, so why bother? So those are some, some symptoms. They can't seem to get control of their thoughts. They can't seem to get control of their life. Everything is negative. 
uh, recent humiliation, perhaps, they've, they struggle through, a recent failure. Uh, so be, be aware of your loved ones or friends who may have struggled with that. An unwillingness to, co to connect. Again, trying to isolate themselves, mm -hmm. watching a lot of TV, uh, playing a lot of video games, doing, do, no longer doing things that at one time they loved to do. Be aware of that, not only in your own life, but others as well. I have a question about that, doctor. Um, and I know I'm not the host, but I really do wonder how much would self, some people trying to self-treat with drugs and alcohol add to that? Much, well, any addiction, again, in, in my opinion, uh, we treat addictions with a medical model we're missing the mark. Mm -hmm. It is not a medical model. It is an emotional mental model. Because any addiction starts with a choice. There is no such thing as an addiction gene. That's hmm. good. That's no right. such thing as an addiction gene. It is an attempt to self-medicate pain. Or it's an attempt to silence negative messages that we all tell ourselves. We mm -hmm. all live in self-talk. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make us crazy. <laughs> that mm -hmm. makes us human. Yeah. And Wow. If our self-talk becomes so depressed and so negative, we want to do something to silence it. Yeah. Addictions tend to do that, at least for a time. Mm -hmm. And if it's not doing it long enough, it gets ratcheted up. Wow. All right. Wow, that's very powerful. So those are some signs, some symptoms we need to be aware of, uh, either in, in our loved ones or maybe even in ourself. And, uh, and if you're noticing some of those things, now don't go out there and try and diagnose everybody, uh, <laughs> but, but you, you know who you can pray for. And, and really, quite honestly, if you're, you're doing okay right now and, and you notice some things in somebody, probably what we need to do is just send them a card, uh, give them a phone call, send them a text, say, hey, I've been thinking about you, and I just want you to know I'm praying for you. Sometimes that, that little simple thing can just be the ray of light that someone needs in order to, to take one more step. Yes, sir. So we need a... a be attentive to the Holy Spirit, you know, uh, just, just as we need to know that there are other people around to walk alongside us, we also need to be attentive to what the Spirit may be saying uh, if we see somebody go by us uh, or somebody in our lives that, that we know that they're just, just a little off and, uh, and maybe the Spirit's prompting us uh, to, uh, to ask uh, uh, them a question, a very powerful one. So any, any other thoughts, brothers? Yeah, yeah, I did have a thought. And, um... And I have this thought from it. This is not from the standpoint because when we address issues, we have to sometimes we are okay with waiting until they become issues before we address them. I want to talk about the symptom, the symptom of not showing symptoms. Because hmm. there are some diseases, hmm. there, are some, there are some things that we don't show, but just because it's not shown doesn't mean it's not an issue. For, for mental health reasons, uh, sometimes we don't, we just say people have mental health issues. We, it's not an issue until we see out with things of it and you know what i'm saying and the reason why i'm saying this is because i want to come from a proactive versus a reactive yeah. we need both mm -hmm. and that's why mm -hmm. i'm i'm mm -hmm. excited about dr shaw being here and enlighten us with his expertise and and if we could make his job easy yeah <laughs> but it, but i don't want to talk about so for those y'all who have symptoms already you're wondering this segment is not for you this is for those who think everything is okay mm -hmm. but we haven't tried god's way or applied a certain discipline that we, that sets us up that when something happens, it could send us in a world that we don't want to be in. You know, God gets dealt an unjust hand sometimes, and we won't say it, but we don't believe in his way. It's not because his way don't work. We hadn't applied his way the way he says it. Come on. The come Bible on. says, commit thyself unto his way. Mm -hmm. See, I took, I took my people through a study, I think it was a year ago, through mental health. We studied all parts of the body, physical, mental, and mental. And one of the things that we found is when you study the scripture on mental health, most of the scriptures have to deal with proactive exercises. Mm -hmm. That if you pre-saturate your mind first, it'll be like a reflex that things that will bounce off you, they won't affect you as negatively as they could if you were saturated in the Bible. So the Bible says things like, whatever's lovely, whatever's pure, think mm -hmm. on these things. Then it says what? The mind who is what? Stayed on, the on Jesus. Here's mm -hmm. the thing that, that we... It makes us think, well, Jesus' way don't work. And what happens is it's just like you taking a Tylenol or someone giving you medicine. You stick it in your pocket and be like, well, it didn't work. <laughs> yeah. See, you received it, but you yeah. didn't take it in your mouth because the medicine was designed to take it in your mouth. And a lot of times what the average church person do, we will find that the average Christian does not embark upon themselves mental disciplines. True. 
mm. that will that would help us stay mentally healthy. And again, this is not a knock against people who are going through mental health. I'm talking to the people who haven't shown symptoms yet, not coming down on the people who you are, because we're talking about being proactive. If we did that, we could set ourselves up to be more stronger, more sustaining if we looked at it the way scriptures is. Because doctors will tell you, I can't help you if you don't take what I told you to take the way that I tell you. Because some right. of us are taking the medication, but not the way the doctor said. Right. If we took Jesus' scriptures, the way that he said, would repel those in his strength and not our own. So I wanted to say that to the proactive yeah. mind, because sometimes we think, well, I'm good because I don't have the symptoms that other people that have that make them think that they have. You already have a symptom of undiscipline that sets yeah. you up. Because life can throw any and have thrown any of us, if you live long enough, a hard punch. Yeah. How do we face that punch? Boxing shows us, and then I'll turn it back over. Boxing shows us that it's not that you're not throwing a punch, but if you see it coming, you're more able to brace and not be stunned by the impact. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're talking about building up our spiritual immunity yes, so that we're Hallelujah. ready for it. Yes, sir. Uh, and, and we can repel it better. Amen. Good, good. Amen. All right, we do have a caller on the line. And uh, so introduce yourself and uh, ask your question, please. Uh, it's Andre calling once again from Greensboro. I wanted to ask about um, basically uh, suicide is caused in most cases, I would say, by depression. And depression is considered like a, a demonic spirit. What is your thoughts on depression being a demonic spirit? And is it the leading cause of suicide? Okay. Well, what do you think, guys? Go ahead. Well, I'm the resident Pentecostal. I guess I can talk about <laughs> this kind I'm of right behind you. Yeah. <laughs> Let me just say that the devil likes to take our natural, normal emotions and cause them to seem bigger, worse, or make them run wild. Um, depression, in and of itself, to have the, 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 the blues. If, they wasn't, if it wasn't a normal part of human life, there wouldn't be a, a whole genre of music called the blues. Uh, so that's a normal human emotion to feel down at times. If it wasn't normal, then you wouldn't read about it in the Bible of people who needed an uplifting. How can we sing, they said in, uh, in the book of Psalms, how can we sing we hang our harps on the willow trees, the weeping willow? And then, you get, then several years later, a couple of millennia later, you have Hank Williams saying, well, I taught the weeping willow how to cry. No. Listen, it's a normal human emotion that the enemy will take and exacerbate it to the worst degree. And if we allow it to continue, as the brother was saying, if we allow it to continue, it will get worse. We have to, uh, un sometimes unwittingly, because we don't know any better, uh, we allow it to get worse. Mm -hmm. um, now, at the same time, the only way to break out of that is either through uh, clinical help, uh, and some people, clinical help doesn't work, some people it doesn't, but absolutely try clinical help before you commit suicide. Please try something. Call 911 if you're feeling suicidal right now, um, where you are in the United States. If you're feeling suicidal right now, call 911 immediately. Uh, but also pastoral help, prayer uh, from people who will support you and love you, that will help. Now, if you get the clinical help without the pastoral help, you might find yourself lacking because there's a God-shaped hole inside of each of us. If you get the pastoral help without the clinical help, you might find that the pastor might have been woefully unprepared to help you because not every pastor can, knows how to deal with clinical depression. So I would suggest that you deal with both. And again, it's not, everything's not a demon. Depression mm -hmm. is not always caused by a demon. It can be, but not always. Yeah. That's what I was going to say um, to, to, to piggyback off that. You can, you can diagnose something right, but treat it wrong if you don't understand which, from which it came. Yeah. And here's one thing we got to understand, not only about the gospel, but about people. There are three enemies. And if we don't talk about and have a healthy balance of recognizing those three, we won't know how to treat things properly. And right. There's three enemies that work against us spiritually. We have the devil, but he's only one. Then we have, the, like the Bible says, we have the world. The world is not the devil. The devil is not the world, but they both can work against you. And lastly, we have our own flesh. Come on, brother. So mm -hmm. there's three enemies that work against us. And if we don't know from which they came, there's some things that are bad that are spiritual, but they don't come from the devil. Yeah. They may just come from you. Yeah. They, just, they just come from your thinking, or they may just come from your habits or your wrongful decisions. Or there may be some things that you didn't have anything to deal with. It might not be the devil. It just might be the world around you impacting you in that way. And so that's one of the things that we, first of all, what we need to do is we need to have a healthy balance of recognizing not just the problem, 
but the enemy from which brought the problem because if we don't do that sometimes we can mean well but we can diagnose it right but treat it wrong if we don't understand well it's the devil or either myself or even the world around us so just to pick it back off that because that's something that's very important in all of the dilemmas that we face yeah not only can we diagnose something right and treat it wrong we can diagnose something wrong and once we do that we're going to be treating it wrong to begin with amen yes sir and to touch on the the gentleman's question can demonic Yeah, that's what I was going to say um, to, to to piggyback off that. You can you can diagnose something right, but treat it wrong if you don't understand which from which it came. Yeah. And here's one thing we got to understand not only about the gospel, but about people. There are three enemies. And if we don't talk about and have a healthy balance of recognizing those three, we won't know how to treat things properly. And right. There's three enemies that work against us spiritually. We have the devil, but he's only one. Then we have, the, like the Bible says, we have the world. The world is not the devil, the devil is not the world, but they both can work against you. And lastly, we have our own flesh. Come on, brother. So mm -hmm. there's three enemies that work against us, and if we don't know from which they came, there's some things that are bad, that are spiritual, but they don't come from the devil. Yeah. They may just come from you. Yeah. They, must, they just come from your thinking, or they may just come from your habits or your wrongful decisions. Or there may be some things that you didn't have anything to deal with. It might not be the devil. It just might be the world around you impacting you in that way. And so that's one of the things that we, first of all, what we need to do is we need to have a healthy balance of recognizing not just the problem, but the enemy from which brought the problem. Because if we don't do that, sometimes we can mean well, but we can diagnose it right, but treat it wrong. If we don't understand, well, it's the devil or either myself or even the world around us. So just to pick it back off that, because that's yeah. something that's very important in all of the dilemmas that we face. Yeah. Not only can we diagnose something right and treat it wrong, we can diagnose something wrong. And once we do that, we're going to be treating it wrong to begin with. Amen. Yes, sir. And to touch on the, the gentleman's question, can demonic influences be a part of our depression? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I believe in deliverance. I participated in deliverance. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it's not always that case. Mm -hmm. you, you can either have an evil spirit that is causing the depression,
But that's not going to be the vast majority. Honest to goodness, that's not the vast majority. It's possible. It's, it's real. But there's also a different type of spirit, besides an evil spirit, that can bring a depression. I want to read it from Proverbs 18, 14. And it says this. The spirit of a man mm. can endure his sickness. But as for a broken spirit, who can bear? Mm. Mm. So it's not just an evil spirit, it's our broken spirit that God is after and wants to heal. And when we talked earlier about can a depressed person be saved, I want to talk about the word save, save or salvation for a moment. The Greek word for salvation means wholeness. It doesn't mean just eternal life. We can experience levels of salvation while we are here Amen. because God desires wholeness. We are broken people. Mm -hmm. And whether we are broken because of our own choices, which is possible and often common, but we are also broken because sin happens to us. If you are abused, mm -hmm. sexually assault, uh, assaulted, that's sin happening to you. That's something that you didn't occur, uh, occur uh, or you didn't ask for or do. So sin happens either because of our choices or what happens to us. In either case, we're dealing with a broken spirit. And salvation is wholeness that God can do right in the here and now. It's a good word. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, you know, uh, this is uh, uh, hopefully very uh, valuable for you to be able to uh, bring together some of these thoughts that we've been uh, asking these questions uh, regarding. Uh, I do think uh, we want to give uh, folks some, some good biblical um, uh, vitamins, uh, I guess, mm -hmm. something like that, to help build that spiritual immunity. Uh, Pastor Powers, you had uh, sent me uh, Deuteronomy 30. I want to read that one out loud, uh, where Moses says, I call heaven and earth to witness against you that I've set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your offspring may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice, and holding fast to him, for he is your life and the length of days, that you may dwell in the land that the Lord uh, swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give them. In other words, you know, uh, God is a God of life. He wants you to choose life. Uh, also, uh, something that I, I think I've come back to uh, multiple times when you had said broken spirit, Dr. Shaw, I was thinking uh, one of those uh, that I, I put to heart a long time ago, Psalm 34, uh, verse 18. Yes. The Lord is close to the yes. broken heart and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Crushed so if you feel Hallelujah. that way right crushed now, God spirit, is there. Yeah. He's available. Yes. Uh, and he may be available supernaturally just to be with you through the Holy Spirit or through a brother or sister in Christ. Uh, another psalm, Psalm 42 and Psalm 43, one of those things where you can almost see uh, the psalmist, and I think it might be David, even if it's not, it doesn't matter, it's very valuable, where the, the psalmist says himself, why are you downcast on my soul, why so disturbed within me, put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God, and he goes through a variety of situations there, but, but uh, just that, that reminder that we can uh, even speak uh, that out loud to ourselves, that we need to um, almost... Uh, encourage ourselves in, uh, in the word uh, by speaking that word over us or just by reading that word out loud. Others that want to... Yeah, and that's just... Uh, I just want to do Philippians real quick because it's going back to the peace. You know, even with viruses and things that people hold, the reason why we take vitamins and eat healthy and sleep healthy, those things are proactive things that if we do that, the less likely, you know, our immune system will be strong. So uh, Philippians, when it comes to mental health, chapter 4, verses um, 80, says, finally, brother, and like I said... We, Whatever things are true, whatever things are honest, so whatever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Chapter 9, verse 9, the following says this, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and get this, the peace of God shall be with you we need that peace of god that, that shall be with us and it remains with us because you know let's be honest we as a people american people we idolize our time we don't give god as much as, as we should because if we did we allow him more of that spiritual vitamin to repel a lot of the things of the enemy what happens is we have bad spiritual diets and then when something comes we don't have that spiritual immune system to yeah. fight off in which ways we need to yeah yeah anybody else i'm, I'm yeah. think Go ahead. Uh, Psalm 33, I don't know, I don't know, I know you, we were talking about that early Psalm. Psalm 33, 20 through 22, we put our hope in the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for him we trust in his holy name, for we trust in his holy name. Let not your unfailing love surround us, Lord, for our hope is in you alone. Hallelujah. Also, I love Psalm 139, I'm going to read it from the King James, 139, 
uh, 13 uh, through 16. For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lower parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy books all my members were written, in which uh, countenance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. Enough of you before you were made, before your continuance was, was created, God knew who you were, God had a plan for you. I know, the, the, I know the plans I have for you, he told Jeremiah. So if you look at these things, um, also finally, as the brother said, i got to tag this on. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, hmm. but a broken spirit dries the bone. Hmm. So if you're broken in spirit, then find some medicine. What's the medicine? A merry heart. Hmm. I'm going to tell you something. It's hard to laugh when you're depressed, but if you get around some, something funny, look, if you want to look at something funny, look at me. I'm funny looking. So if, if you, some funny things, think about the joyful things, as the brother said, but a merry heart. Do something happy, funny. I'm going to tell you, you can always find humor. Look up kittens on the internet. Babies laughing. Babies laughing. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you. Yeah. you I was just looking at kittens. Exactly. <laughs> and, and those things are so funny <laughs> that will help you, and it will help to break you out of the funk yeah. that calls or the fog in your mind. Again, yeah. as the brother said, uh, the psalmist said, um, you know, that my, uh, my vision is blurred. My eyes are worn out because of all of my enemies. Go away, evil. Mm. He says, tells evil, go away, all of you. Uh, for the Lord has heard my weeping. He didn't just stay in the weeping because he knew God heard his weeping. Mm. Mm. Yeah, two verses that i like to uh, hone in on. The first one is a Psalm, Psalm 31, 7. And it says, I will rejoice and be glad in thy loving kindness because thou hast seen my affliction. We serve a God who not only sees, but he cares. Thou hast known the troubles of my soul. So God is the one that you can go to because he sees where you are and he knows the troubles of your soul and the salvation that he provides again, once again, is wholeness. And the other one is, is uh, Isaiah 41, verse 10. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not anxiously look around you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Mm. Hmm. There's somebody watching. The voice keeps popping up in your head. Leaders and non-leaders alike, I'm not going to let anybody know because I should be better than that. Hmm. I tell you, get help and let someone know right yes. now. Yes. I sense that you are watching this and you are saying, you keep tricking yourself, I'm okay, I'm fine, I'm all right. Let someone know because it's not humility, but it's pride to say, mm. I'm better than that. I don't want to appear weak or that something is wrong with me. You, my brother, my sister, need to cry out, not now, but right now. Because that spirit of pride, it wants to hold you to a place to where you don't receive help. You don't let someone else know what's really going on with you. And it may ultimately be too late. Remember this. Just because something bad happened to you or you're doing something bad, don't mean you always was the cause of it. Be of good cheer, but go get help as soon as you possibly can. Amen. We're going to pray for you in just a second. Uh, I want to also give you John 16, where Jesus says, Take heart, I have overcome the world. You're going to have troubles. You're going to have tribulations. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Lamentations 3, Jeremiah weeping before the destruction of his city, and yet he uh, cries out to God and says, The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will hope in him. Just one more quick. One more quick one. Psalm 30, 10. Hear me, O Lord, and have mercy on me. Help me, O Lord. You have turned my morning into joyful dancing. Amen. Father, we pray for this person right now who may be Jesus. struggling with this. God, help them, deliver them, show them that you are the answer and that they can, yes. in their humility, cry mm -hmm. out to you. We pray that you would grab a hold of them and uh, bring someone into their heart and life or multiple people who speak that truth to them and be able to help them through this challenge. In Jesus' name. Thank you so much, folks, for uh, tuning into the pastor study. I want to encourage you, if you've had a question there, still feel free to, to reach out and email those questions to us or go to gtvnetwork.us 
and, uh, and, and reach out to us and, and uh, click on that link that will be able to send your, your prayer request or your, your question to us or call those numbers that are available to you. Um, we just really want to encourage you to, uh, to, to know that there's hope. Suicide is not the answer. It, it is only a temporary, uh, what was it, a permanent solution to the temporary, temporary problem. Mm -hmm. And so we don't want you to handle it that way. Uh, you may have struggled with it or, or you know, as I had confessed, I, I had struggled with it uh, years ago. But God is able and he will help you. And so I want to encourage you to reach out to those who are there to help you. So uh, thank you for tuning in and I and, uh, want to pray that, that God will, will bless you uh, through not just uh, this pastor's study, but through Global Television Network. If he has blessed you today, I want to encourage you to, to reach out to us at 300 North Carolina Highway, 68 South, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27409. You can always uh, text us at 336-575-6577 uh, or at gtvnetwork.us. Thank you so much for being a part of our program today. And, and once again, it's tough stuff that we got to talk about, but it's serious stuff. Uh, God wants us to be whole. He wants us to live a, a life that is whole, that has a strong spiritual immune system there to beat back these uh, attempts of the enemy to try and take us out. Uh, Christ came to give us abundant life. And so uh, by uh, dealing with this at the first of the year, uh, glad that you, we've been able to, uh, to hopefully provide uh, some of that uh, immune building, spiritual immune building stuff for you. Uh, so once again, thank you for tuning in and uh, pray that God will bless you in this new year. Thank you for watching The Pastor's Study. The views expressed by our guests are their own and do not necessarily represent the views of the Global Television Network.